Hi, in this multi-part video, I'll show you how to get your mailbox to send you alerts when your mail has arrived. You know how it is some weeks, you get no letters, and other weeks your mailbox is full. This is one problem that I had to solve. I want to be able to detect every time someone puts a letter into the box and also detect the movement of the rear flap, indicating someone has removed letters. I want to avoid any micro switches as they are more exposed to the elements, are messy and can be unreliable. So a sensor was needed that could respond to something moving from a distance. I didn't want to use a PIR as I may get false readings, especially if the back flap was left open. Same story with ultrasonic sensors and most of them run off 5 volts which limits the choice of MCU. An IR shooting sensor could work, but would rely on some fiddly positioning in the mailbox. 5 milliamp current draw was also a little high. Likewise, phototransistors could be fiddly to work with and would require more cables that I'd want. So I eventually settled on this simple distance sensor, which is capable of responding to an object between 20 and 200 millimeters away. Perfect size for my mailbox, and there won't be any noisy bounce or force triggers. I also needed something on the flap that was cheap and reliable. This fast vibration sensor would do the trick and is dirt cheap. As for the rest of the kit, I chose the ESP8266 Hazar from Adafruit, mainly because I had one lying around. I didn't use the cheaper version as it doesn't have LiPo support. There's also a 1 watt solar cell, a solar LiPo charger, a piece of Vera board or strip board, the distance sensor, and because I like to go overboard, I wanted to add in a temperature sensor, which I didn't end up using because the DHT22 humidity sensor also contains one. I also added in a LUX sensor as an afterthought, because why not? On the software side, I installed the TSL2561 and DHT22 library from Adafruit, the Sharp Distance Sensor library, the Pub Sub Client MQTT library, and enabled support for ESP8266 in my Arduino IDE. First of all, I wanted to check out the power situation. So I cut off the header to the solar panel, stripped, and tinned the wires. I use Bluetack all the time as a third hand. It's cheap and can quickly hold things still. Then wire it up to the terminal block of the LiPo charger. With just my bright studio lights shining on the cell, it was producing a steady 3.86 volts. Both the output terminal block and the LiPo connector were pushing out 1.7 volts, as these were tied together. Adding the LiPo, of course, saw 3.78 volts at the terminal block. Nice. Covering up the cell saw the voltage drop to under 1 volt, and the output terminal maintaining the LiPo voltage. Good enough for my needs. So I prepared a JST header to be screwed into the output terminal block, which would provide uninterrupted power to my ESP8266. Even better. So next I checked out the distance sensor. This unit is a simple brake beam sensor that has onboard hysteresis so you get some fairly clean on or off states. None of the messy bouncing that would occur with micro switches and a very reliable way of remotely detecting movement. I connected the output of this sensor to GPIO pin 14 and powered it up. My ASP8266 would publish the number of times mail was delivered to a local MQTT broker which I had already set up. If you want to know how to do this easily, check out my MQTT installation video. Both the sensor and MQTT network are pretty responsive, just what I was looking for. So on to temperature sensing. As I mentioned before, I was going to use the MCP9808 temperature sensor. But after updating all my code and getting it going on the MQTT network, I ditched it for this instead, because the DHT22 sensor already has a temperature sensor on board. Oh, of course! So plugging it in and updating my code once again, I got it publishing temperature, humidity and calculated heat index events to the MQTT network. Easy. Onto the mailbox rear flap sensor. I used a plain vibration sensor that I initially connected up to the GPI pin 4. This sensor also resets the mail delivery counter. Since I have all this set up, it seems to be a waste not to add another sensor. Mm. The TSL2561 is a pretty accurate LUX sensor. A bit of overkill for my application, but I have five of them, and I've been looking to use them somewhere. 
This is an I2C based sensor that consumes 15 milliamps whilst in operation, but can drop down to 15 microamps whilst powered down. Good for running off battery. So once again, modify my code to add in this sensor, and got it to publish Lux data events via MQTT along with the temperature and humidity. Now that everything is running on the breadboard, time to make it more permanent. I always like using these header blocks, because then I can reuse components from older projects instead of soldering everything up permanently to the strip board. I found a decent case that I thought would fit everything in, so I cut the strip board down to size. It's pretty easy to do this, just mark out where to cut, you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once. Score the board with a knife and just snap it in two. One of the things I forgot to do before soldering was sand the board down. Strip board tends to oxidise over time and doesn't solder well. You end up with some dodgy solder joints. So a bit of 1200 grit sandpaper cleaned it up well and made soldering a lot easier. Next to cut the tracks with a Dremel that I don't want connected and start soldering up everything. Using the end wire of a resistor to bridge contacts works well and you often tend to throw away the offcuts anyway. This is the ground wire for the LUX sensor. Next connect the SDA pin of the LUX sensor to the ESP8266 SDA pin, followed by SCL from the sensor to the ESP. Then test to make sure it works. Yep, looks good. Next onto the distance sensor. First power and then ground. Then the signal wire from the sensor to GPIO pin 14 of the ESP. In my code I refer to this as the deliver pin. Testing again showed that it was all functional. Next onto the rear flap sensor. Because I had some spare GPIOs and didn't want to solder up any more wires, I used GPIO 13 as a lazy man's ground for the sensor on GPIO 12, which had its own internal pull-up resistor. You will have noticed I always tend to test everything out at each stage of building to make sure it works. It avoids a lot of rework later. I've been down that path far too many times before. On to cases. My original plan was to use this small box for housing everything. It would have fit had I not used those headers, so I had to look for another. This one was big enough and fitted everything well, but wasn't quite tall enough to hold everything. I finally found this rather excellent bodacious box, man. Just like an Iron Maiden dude. Whoa! Hang on! What? I didn't write that. Oh, John, he's done it again. John! So, next mark out where I need to drill holes in the lid. I need to be fairly accurate as I want to minimise mistakes. Then into the shed to drill out the holes, and back into the studio to square up the holes with a file. What a perfect fit. Look at that. Next, back into the shed again to drill holes out for the humidity sensor. To allow the cables to run inside the box and also allow me to attach it to the outside. Next, solder up the power and ground to the sensor. And finally, the sensor output to GPIO 0 of the ESP. I moved it to GPIO 0 because the LUX sensor is now using GPIO 4 as STA of the I2C bus. Then another round of testing to make sure I haven't broken anything. Yep, more works well, nice. To reduce the cost, I didn't bother with any standoffs, but just used hot glue instead. This is a pretty simple method. Just apply a ball of hot glue to each corner and wait for it to harden. This acts as a raised point to avoid the board touching anything underneath. Then just before you mount it in the box, apply another dab of hot glue and press firmly down. Next I connected the LiPo charger output to the battery input of my ESP and then tin two wires which were screwed into the solar cell input terminals. Then connected up the solar cell and finally the battery. Yep, still all works well. Now I had an issue. Since I was using the ore metal box, it acted as a Faraday cage, which attenuated the Wi-Fi signal considerably. So I soldered up an external antenna. This is all fairly straightforward, but increases the range of your ESP considerably. I should really have cut the old antenna track off, but it didn't seem to cause any issue. Then screwed the antenna jack to the body of the box, a bit of cable tidying up, inserting the battery, and there you have it. Pretty good, eh? I used gaff tape to hold it together temporarily until I was sure everything worked well. 
Back under the solar cell, I didn't want anything to short out, so I used a Ziploc bag, folded over several times, and then ran some gaff tape down each side and on the back to hold it all together. Then ran some more gaff tape on the front to seal it. And there you have it. Good enough until I have a permanent housing for it. Onto the rear flap sensor. These are great things that will sense any small vibration. Perfect for this application. Attaching it temporarily to the back of the flap allowed it to sense the flap moving up and down. So a quick walkthrough of my code. I revisit this in my ESP battery optimization video, so check that out at the end. First of all, include all the essential libraries. You can drop these libraries if you don't need the lux and temperature sensing. Then come the important definitions for my local Wi-Fi access point and MQTT server. The macro that defines the MQTT topic base string. The GPIO pins that are used for the DHT22 sensor, distance sensor and rear flap movement sensor the publishing wait time for the temperature and lux sensors, the current values of those sensors and the current letter delivery count. Then the setup of all the GPIOs. The deliver pin is set up as a falling interrupt and will execute deliver func, as well as the check pin calling check func. Then the setup of Wi-Fi connectivity and sensors. Inside the loop function, the ESP will try to reconnect to MQTT if connectivity is lost. The next two code blocks are used to publish MQTT messages as you can't do this from interrupts. I also reset the deliver count variable when someone opens a rear mailbox flap. Then I handle the regular publishing of temperature, humidity and sensor data. The next three functions are used to publish messages to the MQTT broker, either a plain string, converted integer or converted float. The next function handles connectivity to the MQTT broker and once connected will subscribe to several important topics. I use this topic to automatically update the ESP's important variables to find above. All I have to do is run these commands from any client to change values on the ESP. Note that I set the message to be retained. This means every time the ESP subscribes to the config topic, the MQTT broker will publish these messages and the ESP will update variables. This is actually a really great feature of MQTT. Why not publish compiled code to a topic and have the ESP perform OTA programming on itself? The next important functions are the interrupts I mentioned earlier. This one will fire when someone puts mail in the front of the box. And this one when someone retrieves mail at the back. Note that I temporarily disable interrupts while this function executes. I don't want any bizarre race conditions occurring. The callback function will be called by the pub sub client library and will provide the topic and message payload. First there seems to be a small bug in this library which doesn't place a zero terminating byte at the end of the payload string every time. So I had to add this quick hack in. Second, I check for any published message that contains the config topic and then update the important variables. So that's about it for the code walkthrough. If I remove all the serial print statements, it actually ends up quite small. You can check these out on my website. So I brought in my mailbox from outside, uh, just so I could fine tune things a little bit. It's a little bit grubby, but I hope you don't notice. So I've mounted the box on the ceiling of the letterbox. So as the mail comes in, the distance sensor will pick it up and it will publish an MQTT notification. So the distance sensor is just spaced enough for it to be able to pick up letters. At the back of the mailbox, when you come in and check the mail and it'll reset the delivery count and also publish an MQTT message. So it's all fairly straightforward. Of course on the side there's a solar panel which uh, charges the LiPo battery. The LiPo battery has enough charge to last about a day. Uh, this is completely unoptimized code so uh, once it's optimized it might last a week. So let's take it outside and test it out. Well, it's pretty simple to connect your mailbox to MQTT. However, this is only the first part in this video series. In subsequent videos I'll show you how to get your mailbox to send your push alerts to your mobile, optimize your code to get the most out of your LiPo batteries, and build a more rugged box to house it all in. Thanks for watching, see you next week.